Uh, good evening. It's 6.35, May 22nd, 2024, and the meeting of the Urban Design Commission will now come to order. May we please have a roll call? Edith McKee? Here. Allison Gordy? Here. Julia Foland? Here. Ryan Lucas? Here. Trevor Strait? Here. James Cullis? Here. Uh, Monica Sullivan is absent, and Alexandra Nanalo is excused. You have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you. May we get a motion to approve the minutes from February 7th, 2024. It's been moved by Commissioner Gordy and seconded by Commissioner Foland. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Are there any objections to the minutes being approved? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we move item. I'd like to request a motion to move item C2, the annual election of officers, um, to reorder the agenda to move this to occur after the public hearing. It's been moved by Commissioner Gordy and seconded by C Commissioner Strait. Are there any objections to the reordering of the agenda? Uh, hearing none, the agenda is reordered and the annual election of offices will occur after public hearing. Moving on, are there any disclosures this evening? Uh, I'm going to abstain from the February 7th minutes since I was not part of the commission at that time. Thank you. Are there any other disclosures? Okay. Hearing none. Um, we are moving on to the informational item on the agenda, the public art selection um, for the Anchorage Police Department and the Anchorage Senior Center. Um, may we have a staff report? Uh, point of order, I, 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 I am part of the uh, public art committee and I've commented in the past, but it's, uh, it's just an informational item for installation of art at uh, both the Anchorage Police Department and the Anchorage Senior Center. Um, if the commission has any questions, I can bring them back to the, uh, to the 1% for, for art director. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to the consent agenda. We don't have any resolutions for approval. We don't have site or landscape plan approvals or other business on the consent agenda, unfinished business, or items on the regular agenda this evening. Therefore, we will move on to public hearings, and I'll read the public process. The Urban Design Commission meets the second and fourth Wednesday of each month except holidays as regular meetings. If the Urban Design Commission fails to complete its agenda for its regular meetings, the Commission carries over the remainder of the agenda to the following meeting date. The procedure by which the public may speak to the Urban Design Commission at its meeting is, one, after the staff presentation is completed on public hearing items, the chair will ask for public testimony on the issue. Two, Persons who wish to testify will follow the time limits established in the Urban Design Commission Rules of Procedure. Petitioners, including all his, her, their representatives will have 10 minutes. Rebuttal by the petitioner may be allowed when time has been reserved. Representatives of groups, this includes community councils and PTAs, etc., will have five minutes and individuals will have three minutes. Three, when your testimony is complete, you may be asked questions by the commission. You may only testify once on any issue unless questioned by the commission. Four, any party of interest wishing to appeal shall first file with the planning director within seven days of the commission's decision made on the record. 
a written notice of intent to appeal in accordance with AMC 21.03.050A.4A. Commission recommendations to the Anchorage Assembly are not appealable. Following the approval of written findings of fact and decision, any party of interest may, within 20 days, file an appeal by filing a notice of appeal and paying the appeal fee and deposit in accordance with section 21.03.050. The notice of appeal must be filed with the planning director on a form prescribed by the municipality. If the appellant is not the applicant, the appellant Notice of appeal shall include proof of service on the applicant. Um, with respect to case 2024-0053, the petitioner is Eagle River Chugiak Parks and Recreation. The request is for review of an off-leash dog park, the Peters Creek Dog Park. May we have staff's presentation. Yes, thank you, Chair McKee. Eagle River Chugiak Parks and Recreation is requesting approval of a major site plan to construct the Peters Creek Dog Park within Peters Creek Park in Chugiak. Uh, the dog park would include a one and a half acre open area, a three acre treed air area with soft surface loop trails, and then access would be from Hunter's Drive uh, with a 15 car paved parking lot. No reviewing agencies are opposed to the approval of the site plan. The application included a resolution of support from the Chugiak Eagle River Park and Recreational Service Area Board of Supervisors and an email in support from the Chugiak Community Council. Uh, the department did receive four written comments in opposition. One of the written comments included a petition of signatures in opposition to a dog park in Peters Creek Park that was circulated in May of 2021. There are four approval criteria in Title 21 that must all be met for the Urban Design Commission to approve of a site plan. The department finds the following for those four approval criteria. Criterion one is met. The site plan is consistent with prior approved plans and approvals, including an administrative site plan approval. Uh, that was for construction of the parking lot. That was with case 2022-0106. Uh, it's also consistent with the 2021 Chugiak Eagle River Dog Park Site Selection Study. Criterion 2 is met with conditions of approval to document compliance with dimensional and landscaping standards. With the conditions of approval, the site plan complies with all applicable development and design standards. Uh, the site is within the PLI, or Public Lands and Institutions Zoning District. Criterion 3 is met with a condition of approval to post hours of operation to show closure of the dog park at night. The site plan addresses significant adverse impacts that can be reasonably anticipated to result from the use. Uh, the application describes mitigation measure, measures to address impacts including a six-foot chain-link fence, signs with facility rules, downward-facing lighting, and a lockable gate for the parking lot, and mud mitt stations with dog waste bags. Criterion four is met. The site plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan, including a land use designation of park and natural resource, and also with objectives and policies from the Chugiak Eagle River Comprehensive Plan. Uh, therefore, the department recommends approval of the Peters Creek Dog Park major site plan subject to the conditions in the staff report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Yes, I've got a question. Commissioner Strait. Um, and going through uh, the packet here, um, I had a question on the exterior lighting item um, that's on page five. <clears throat> a couple things here. It seems to reference a school. I'm, ass I'm assuming there's no school involved. Yes, uh, Commissioner Strait, that was probably a typo on my part since the, the last few site plan reviews I've had have all been for schools, so that's, sorry about that. That's okay. 
Uh, one other question on that particular item. Um, since we're in the Chugiak Eagle River um, section of Title 21, I believe there's an, an item in there that discusses having a public process in regarding to exterior lighting. Um, do you know if that process has been followed? Uh, the major site plan review did follow the public process requirements for a public hearing. Uh, so that would also include public meetings that would discuss lighting. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Oh. Um, I have a question. Um, well, first a question about the schools. In some of the um, comments, it said that this was near a school. So is that true or is that not true? Yes, the, this project is near a school. Maybe I misunderstood Commissioner Strait's question. Um, the, there is a school across, um, it's old, let me look at the map so I don't get the, the name wrong, but I believe it's across the old Glen Highway. Okay. Okay, then my second question um, is in regard to a statement on just page three that said it was picking between a lot in Chugiak and one in Eagle River. The lot in Eagle River, is that the one that is currently being developed as a dog park that's about to open soon? Yeah, Commissioner, I, I thought I may get a question on that since we did get a comment that referenced that. So um, I was actually at that park recently, so I, I know that it has um, courts for playing pickleball and some friends had mentioned that uh, that they knew of people taking their dogs there. I was not able to confirm with the Lions Club that they had opened the dog park. I, I had tried contacting someone, but I, I was unable to reach it. So the park that's reference, it's not a municipal park. It's um, it's run by the Lions Club. Um, but I did look up the the state uh, legislation that that commenter had referenced, uh, and it does. It does talk about uh, funding for a, a dog park in, in Eagle River in that state legislation okay. um, to be run by the Lions Club. Got it, okay. That was it. Are there any other questions? Uh, will the petitioner please come forward? Please state and spell your name for the record. You will have 10 minutes to present. There's like a little button. It looks like a face kind of oh, a green sticker. Oh, there's a piece of tape on it. Um, my name is Jeff Urbanis. Uh, I work for uh, Chugach Eagle River Parks and Recreation. Um, I'm here to talk about the project, um, and I'm happy to answer questions afterwards about lighting school and the other dog park, but it is my intention to use five minutes of my time and reserve uh, five for later. Um, I'm here to talk about the Peters Creek Dog Park. Uh, the, it's the department's position that this is a practical implementation of a new park amenity that has been requested by the public. Um, during the 2018 uh, Peter, uh, excuse me, Eagle River Dog Park study, 75% uh, of uh, respondents said that they would like to see this amenity in our community. Um, we believe that the proposed dog park is actually in a good location uh, relative to the other parks in the area as well as uh, some of the convenient amenities uh, in our community. It is near the school, the grocery store, the post office. I have a map in a little bit, a couple slides that shows that. Um, 
one of the things that's important to the department for the approval of this is it's a not only does it represent a new amenity but it's a new tool in our toolbox for um, controlling kind of uh, ad hoc dog parks uh, that have been popping up in some of the uh, adjacent parks that are conflicting with other uses such as ball fields and the rest of it. Uh, so this will give us a place to direct that activity. Uh, and uh, in this particular case, this project has had a little bit of a longer timeline, but in this instance, I think that process has allowed us to come up with a design uh, that responds to some of the public uh, concerns expressed about the project. Uh, here is a map that shows the location of the dog park. The yellow is the, is the site. Um, you can see there are three parks nearby, Loretta French Park, Peters Creek, dog, uh, Peters Creek Park, as well as Oberg soccer fields. All of those are parks that have some issues with um, kind of non-sanctioned off-leash dog, uh, dog park use that conflicts with other users. Uh, in terms of other community amenities and just proximity to those, uh, Three Rares Grocery Store, the post office, the, it's across the street from Chugach Elementary School, the senior center's right there. Um, and one of the things that's worth pointing out is that it is located uh, see if I can get that. There is a separate uh, bike path that runs down the old Glen Highway that's just, just out in front of this. Um, project history, like I said, it was a little bit longer. Uh, the project started in 2017 with a dog park study by r and Consultants. Um, the project progressed. It kind of hit a little bit of a stall point during COVID and some low staffing uh, times of our department. Um, since then, uh, we've kind of picked up with a resolved, uh, like a, a, excuse me, a revised design. Um, and some components of that design uh, were mentioned in the staff report are parking lot lighting, um, site improvements at the Lace uh, Hunters Drive intersection, cutting back the slope, removing vegetation to improve site distance, uh, a perimeter fence around the entire off-leash area, uh, we've agreed in, in, in our, our site plans as a 30-foot buffer from residential properties. Um, and one of the original designs was for a more open dog park. Um, and in this particular case, the larger portion of the area will be naturally vegetated with um, like soft surface trails for off-leash dog walking, uh, as well as signage. Uh, this is just a quick view this was also in the application of the conceptual plan you can see the uh, the parking lot uh, that will have a double gate to sort of just you bring your dog in you take off the leash you open up the gate and then your dog's in the dog park uh, as well as the area with where we'll be retaining natural vegetation and uh, two kind of loops of soft surface trails um, with a little bit of a longer timeline we've had a lot of opportunities for public outreach um, like I've mentioned a couple times now, the project started uh, with a survey in 2017. It's gone through some open houses, some additional surveys. Uh, the staff report mentioned the petition that was kind of received here towards the end. Um, but since then, uh, we kind of revised the design and, and it was after that when we got approval, letter, uh, recommendations of approval from the Board of Supervisors uh, as well as the Chugiak Community Council. Uh, for, you know, if this uh, is approved with uh, conditions or, you know, continues to move forward, this is, you know, a broad overview of our, our schedule for moving forward. Um, and I think just for anyone who wants more information, that is my contact information and I might, I might stop there and reserve the balance of my time. Are there any questions of the petitioner? Uh, Commissioner Strait? Yes, uh, I've got a couple questions. Surely. Um, a couple times throughout uh, the packet and, and the design documents, there seems to be a little bit of a conflict, m very minor, on the number of parking spaces um, between 15 and 17. Do you, do you happen to know which one? It would be it would be the higher one, and I think that's probably an artifact of of uh, several iterations of the pro of the project. Okay, perfect. And I apologize for that. It's okay. Um, 
In regards to the improvements at the intersection of Hunter and Lace, yes. um, can you talk a little bit about those, uh, I'm assuming they're site distance improvements? It is, they're the site distance improvements. So if you come, you would, pr primarily it's from turning out of the dog park. So you would turn right out of the, out of the parking lot in the driveway and you travel uh, 70, 80 feet to the intersection. Um, you can see the Lace Road intersection of the old Glen Highway. There's a little bit of a curve going back on Lace and that was where the primary conflict was. So we've taken back that slope um, there's a little bit, we need, for the final project, we'll continue taking back the rest of that slope, removing the vegetation so that you'll have an unobstructed view on the, on the right-hand side. So um, you may or may not know this, but do you know if you're trying to meet like intersection site distance requirements or just trying to provide as much as possible? I, I believe unaltered, um, talking with Randy Ribble at the traffic department, there were no concerns raised with the site distance. This is just sort of a belt and suspenders approach to, ha to have the best project that we can. Okay, sounds good. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, a soft surface trail. Can you, I'm not familiar with that term. Can you describe kind of what that is? So um, many of the multi-use trails, a little bit different than Anchorage, our trails tend to be not paved. Um, so a soft surface trail can mean many things. It could just be like a dirt path. In this particular instance, we would be talking about um, uh, the, the spec is E1. So it's basically a D1 with some fines uh, in it that just kind of creates like a nice, uh, for drainage and mud and puddles and the rest of it. But, you know, hard, 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 it doesn't turn into a quagmire when it's wet, but it's not pavement. And many of the trails that we're building out in the community kind of follow the same um, trail cross section. Okay, thanks. Uh, I had one other question. And this is more, uh, maybe you can explain a little bit. Um, I know you talked about it briefly, but can you describe a little bit um, the changes that you guys made in the design, specifically based on the public input? Sure. So uh, the original design was kind of the whole entire five acre site cleared, um, more, more or less. Um, one of the things we did was we kept the kind of the east side of the site, the, like the three plus acre portion will now be naturally vegetated. All of the trails, um, a little bit this predates me and just in terms of the concerns that were expressed in some of the public meetings. Some of the neighbors that lived along Needles were concerned that essentially their backyard would go from being trees in an undeveloped park to now suddenly not. And so um, retention of the trees and then also making sure that all of those trails will be at least 30 feet away from the property boundary. Um, and I think I discussed in the application, one of the concerns we heard too is just sort of folks who mean well but get wandering around with their dog and suddenly find themselves in somebody else's backyard so that was one of the one of the other uh things that's not earlier phases of the design did not have a fence the around the whole entire five acre site so um, that's both basically both to keep fido where he belongs but also fido's fido's owners too that um, doesn't suddenly find himself in somebody's backyard by accident uh, a signage as well. Um, one of the things I think that came out in the public meeting, there was a concern that um, where it's located and there's just, you know, there's, there's a turn off the old Glen Highway and then another quick turn. Um, so we actually talked about putting a sign and it's mentioned in the application past the entrance to let people know that they missed it and they need to go back. So, and then both actually signs, uh, just signs to make it easier for people to, uh, to find as well as uh, you know, standard signs with enforcing good behavior and, um, and I believe the staff rec report uh, made a request to make sure that hours were posted just to avoid any other conflicts. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Commissioner Foland. Hi, I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is uh, in response to one of the comments that you got. I'm um, saying that there's a conflict with snow piling and the gate. Is that, can you, I wasn't sure I understood what they were talking about. I mean, what's your plan for snow removal? 
So I have been talking, my office is right next to Eagle River Street Maintenance, and so we have already had chats about um, what needs to be done in the future there in terms of, it, it's, it's a little bit of an interesting area in that the road is, past the park is actually not in the right of way, it, and, and then there's a turn, and then it becomes kind of like right at the turn, it becomes a public right of way to a private road. So we've, I've been chatting with Eagle River Street Maintenance about um, piling snow and what needs to be done there. There's also a conflict with the gate. So in terms of the area that snow's piled now um, and that becoming worse, that's gonna go away because we, we're gonna need to keep that gate free for access. So okay. one way or another, site practices for snow removal on that street will, will be changing and we're tracking with Eagle River um, Street Maintenance. And then could you just talk a little bit about what the characteristics of the rest of the park, like the park to the north of this, north of Lace Road? Yeah, sure. So uh, the larger park is bounded by Chugach State Park on the east, uh, Chapel Road uh, on the north, Chapel and I think Great Land. Uh, the west is the old Glen Highway, and then the south is uh, Lace Road, um, and that actually, well, it's a Lace, Ro Lace Road bisects a small portion of the park, which th where is where this mm -hmm. is located. Peters Creek is a little bit further than north and also bisects the park um, north and south. There is no development in between Lace and Peters Creek. Um, on the north bank of Peters Creek, there is uh, an open area with a picnic pavilion. That is actually kind of an ad hoc dog park now. Um, there were earlier phases of this project that looked at putting the dog park in that area, but due to concerns with displacing other uses as well as the proximity to Peters Creek, that was one of the reasons that we, we moved it to the location that's proposed now. Um, immediately adjacent and sort of sharing the same larger area of that open area, there's also a Frisbee golf uh, course there. And so there's a, that, that's another area with potential conflict with existing off-leash dog use, so. And then the last question, just so I understand where the school is, is that kind of across, like closest to C on the, the site plan? Closest to the vegetation buffer or the roadway? Uh, if you can see this, it's, 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 it's literally across this, it's literally across the old Glen Highway. Oh, I got it, okay. It, it's, we have, there's a page in our packet. Yeah. Oh, on that one, yeah. Uh, so on this map, the curve that I talked about with lace is right here. Um, and then uh, lace comes out to the old Glen Highway. And uh, the intersection with lace and the old Glen Highway is literally across the old Glen Highway for the uh, main entrance into Chugiak Elementary School. And then on that same side of the street as the dog park is the uh, separated paved uh, bike path that runs down the old Glen. Commissioner Gordy. Hi. Uh, Commissioner Foland actually asked one of my big questions, which was about the snow storage and snow removal. Um, so my questions will be a little bit more brief, but um, I recall reading in here at some point that there were two, this was kind of narrowed down to two different sites, and I know you've addressed it a little bit, um, about why this particular one was chosen based on the proximity of these other parks that are being used for um, off-leash dog activities that aren't necessarily intended for that. Um, can you elaborate sure. on that at all? So some of this predates me. I, I, I believe my information is correct, it, it, and it's correct. There, there might be little details that are off, but very quickly, starting in 2017, 2018 timeframe, um, an idea kind of fleshed out of the original Doc Park study of one in Eagle River that served kind of the more developed area, and then one that served uh, like the Peters Creek Chugiak area. There are lots of things in the parks that are kind of divided that way where, you know, one's, you know, Eagle River versus Chugiak. Um, fairly, the next step was basically Firehouse Lane as the sort of Eagle River project and Peters Creek Park as uh, the other, there were other areas of Loretta French that were in the mix for a little bit, and, and, and uh, at one point Beach Lake Park was discussed as well, particularly the undeveloped portion there, and that's just not ready for development. But 
Um, Firehouse Lane was not moved forward primarily because of the sidewalks that are there, and I, and there and someone says, well, they're on sidewalks here either, but it's a little bit more, and, and you guys pr probably know a lot more about this than I do, but you can't just have a sidewalk that brings you to nowhere, and that was the problem with Firehouse Lane first and foremost, is that you didn't have sidewalks that brought you to the site safely, um, and, and so that was one of the things that killed that rather quickly. Um, there was a question earlier about Eagle River Lions Dog Park. Um, I think this was a practical alternative given the limitations of Firehouse, but going back to the original goals that came out from the original dog park study, to have one in the Eagle River area and have one in Chugiak, actually now this becomes complementary to the new dog park that will be opening up. I believe it's the second at Eagle River Lions Park, which will be also be a public dog park that's available for uh, folks that live in the more developed areas of our community. Thank you. Um, and then the only other question I had was regarding the lighting. I know there, we started to kind of have a discussion about that. Um, and I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on the lighting. I know it's all targeted to be kind of that down lighting that is required at schools so, as well. So lighting is one of those things, and I should confess that I'm, I'm, I'm actually not too far away from this. So I, um, I spent a little extra time on this issue and just said like, um, and there is a little leeway in code in our area in terms of you, there, there, you can do gating instead of lighting and the rest of it. And um, like many areas of the hillside, it's the same thing. Folks are pretty protective of their dark skies. And so in, uh, in particularly in the discussions that I've had since I came on board with this project last year, have well, when, I've, when I've been at community councils discussing it, um, and, and then just individual meetings with people on site have said like, do you, do you want lighting? And, or, or is that like a, it, like is lighting something you want or is lighting something you don't want? And the consensus that came out of that, um, I think the most robust discussion was at the Chugia Community Council, is that they did want lighting to just sort of knock off things that go bump in the night, but they wanted to make sure that the lighting that we incorporated used um, fixtures that, that were, were you know, downward directing, and that's, that's our plan moving forward. And so um, that was one of those things that probably could have gone either way, and that was the consensus of, of the feedback we got from the public. Understood. Thank you for the elaboration. Commissioner Foland. Okay, I have a few more questions. Is this map in our packet? Because I can't find it. There's one similar there. This one is not. There's not a zoomed out one? There is not. Okay. So I have just like kind of like a, some hypothetical questions. Sure. Um, I mean, a dog park is amazing. It's a huge asset to the community. Sure. Uh, having gated areas, absolutely incredible. It keeps them off, you know, unleashed dogs off yep. um, other things. Um, but if I were to just kind of like stand back and look at like the city version, and in my experience with dog parks and other places, they're usually like, they're either right in an urban core, like they're in the heart of like Washington Square Park in New sure. York City, um, or they're in like a very large park and they're in kind of the middle. Okay. And they're nestled in, you know, because it's, I mean, dogs, I mean, I, I have dogs, you yeah, know, yeah. they run around, they play, they make a lot of noise. Um, I have neighbors that have six dogs and they bark all the time and they drive me totally crazy. Um, and you kind of can't control that so much. So if I'm l looking at this from like a zoomed out kind of perspective, like I would essentially never nestle it right up against houses. So and I know you inherited this project and this has been going for a long time, but if we were like to step back and just like, I mean, we're supposed to be looking at the larger zoomed out scale and the details simultaneously. And I think that, the, I mean, the details, there's some room for improvement and the small scale on the project, but I'm also just wondering if that's like, if I were the neighbors and this thing was moving right next to me, I don't think that would be very pleasant. And I'm just, that's just not the ideal location for a dog park, I don't think. Uh, you know, in terms of that as a question, I guess I would say, you know, in terms of as, as this area goes, this, this is the Peter's Creek Business District. So for this part of the community, this, this is the core, commercial core of the community. Um, 
in terms of the park specifically, I mentioned earlier that other areas of the park, Peters Creek Park, were mm -hmm. discussed. Um, I know during when I took over the project, you know, we I took another look at Loretta French um, as well as Oberg. And in terms of the utilization of those other areas of the park and the water quality concerns that, you know, like when you said the middle of the park, the middle of the park would be the open area on the north bank of Peters Creek. Yeah, I understand. And yeah. that just was not an appropriate um, location. You know, we thought, you know, in terms of this location, the proximity to the separate bike path, um, when I think of dog parks, you know, and, and coming up to speed with all the rest of it, I mean, certainly dogs bark. I don't know that dogs bark at dog parks really any more or less than they would, you know, in like other environments. I mean, usually the dogs are busy running and chasing and the rest of it. I will say there are mushers in this neighborhood um, and, you know, feeding time, you know, you, you do hear a lot of dogs barking in this neighborhood. So I know that's a little, it's a little bit different, but I don't think it's necessarily completely out of character. Though I am sensitive to what you said in terms of it's difficult to live next to a park one day and have it be one thing and, the, and then have it be something different later. And, and I think that was one of the, one of the reasons we really moved towards keeping as much vegetation as possible and keeping that buffer. So yeah, I mean, I think that that whole, that uh, landscape plan looks really nice. It looks natural. You would, you would um, see trees. Um, what, what is on the south side of Hunters? Are those residences? Um, so there are, yeah, so there are two, um, let me make sure, right here, right here and right here, so yeah. sort of where the O and the P are. There are two multiplex apartments, at least one, at least one of them I think is a fourplex, and the other one is, I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's multiple bedrooms in a house, multiple apartments in a house or whatever, but it's, it's a, it's a multi-unit rental as well. And then over on the, kind of like the bottom L is, and south of that, is that all single family residential? Yeah, so the long, the longer, the Where longer. Where the forested bit is? Yeah, like right here. Yeah. That, uh, those are like large lots, single, single family residences. And can you remind me just the uh, square footage of um, the um, E, the training field again? Does anybody uh, remember? I don't, I, I don't know. Re uh, an acre plus for one and it. three acres plus for the other. Okay. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. Surely. Um, one of my first was that the that the, you've got ADA compliant parking and you've got double gating. Are the, is the skew between the double gating, um, have we looked to make sure that somebody who's using a wheelchair can navigate through the first gate and then through the second gate? I don't believe that, the, I, I, they, the, there's a longer answer to the question. The shorter answer is yes. One of the things, if you look at dog parks around town, one of the things that becomes problematic with the swinging gates is that you end up with like a pit. So w one of the things that I've been, I have, still working on finding an, a, a design, uh, would be like a, like a Dutch door gate. So dur during, um, and I, I've not found anything commercially available, but we're trying to see if we can fab something. So basically partially, you know, some, so at some point during the winter, you would lose the bottom, you know, two feet of the gate and then just unlock the top so that you would have like a nice at grade transition. I, I, we're, we're continuing to work on, the, and it, it's certainly an issue. And I mean, there, there, uh, you know, all the dog parks in town have like crater, crater, <laughs> and and we're, we're, I'm trying to find a better solution. And and I'm and I'm and and uh, I hope by the time we're ready, we may have that kind of Dutch door uh, co concept fleshed out. Um, and then my other question was, um, so you're going to have mutt mitt stations along the walking trails and the open play area. Um, 
Will there also be garbage receptacles yes. along the path wing so that people don't just leave their yes. bits along the trail? Okay, that was And one that's of one of the reasons why um, in terms of that corner where the above the O on, on this map here, um, which is the potential conflict area with snow, we're going to have, um, it, sh it shows on one of my construction sheets that basically you would have uh, like a maintenance gate that would allow a vehicle to drive into the open part, but you'd also have a maintenance vehicle to be, to go into the natural part. And, and, and one of the chief concerns is, is trash removal. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and then my other question is regarding the access roads and that um, site distance have been checked for cars, bikes, and peds, including the left out movement, which is sometimes overlooked. Um, and then the other comment was the the offset distance from Lace Road to the to the access to the parking area. Just that that offset distance is also checked because there's a there's a minimum offset requirement um, for an access near another like a secondary street next to a primary street, and that that offset also needs to. But it I I didn't see a comment regarding that from the the traffic department. during our pre-app. Uh, discussion with staff and other departments. Uh, the, the traffic staff and I had just a, a chat about about that, and and they, and they did not they did not see any problems with that. Okay. And then my last question is the um, interior trails. They're a soft surface, but are they something that somebody who's using a wheelchair would be able to navigate? So uh, the short answer is no, but with all of our trails, we're, I was here like a year ago with the multi-use trail at Beach Lake. We've been working with Challenge, um, trying to get as many of these trails to um, meet an adaptive standard. So um, we've been having a lot of chat with the, with the hand, uh, like the fat bike hand cycle people. Um, and we're trying to make, meet that standard just with the difficulty of, of uh, we, not all wheelchairs are created equal, and certainly not a hospital wheelchair would be able to get out on this trail. But with this trail surface, like a more robust wheelchair probably could be pushed. Um, that was one of the reasons, like the senior center there, like I, I kind of see a potential uh, thing to do that. But but uh, we're, we're working on, for our stuff and for our planning, more of an adaptive standard that you would be able questions at the gate and the sh you know those sorts of things so that, that's kind of where my questioning was going that I think you know if you're a person who uses a wheelchair for your mobility and maybe you also have an accompanying service animal that this could be a really nice facility for you to to, to utilize and, and that's certainly on our radar I don't know if you remember the project that we were here about a year ago for with the chicane gates we spent actually a lot of time with challenge um, with cones out in the parking lot and it, it changed the design because you know we 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 were there with uh, uh, you know trying to figure out n navigating the radius of the turns and it, and, it, and it was definitely very eye opening. So yeah, yep. Thank you. That concludes my questions. Are there any other commissioners with questions? Um, nope. Okay. I'll now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Open the hearing to public testimony. Is there anyone wishing to testify? Yep, please come forward. And then, um, when you're ready, please uh, state and spell your name for the record. My name is Adam Creasy. And spell? C-R-E-A-S-E-Y. Thank you. And then are you testifying as an individual or a representative of a group? Individual. Thank you. So you have three minutes. Okay. Thank you. So I live on 22750 Hunter's Drive. This is, sorry, this is my house right here. So if this goes through, I'll wake up and see a six-foot chain-link fence right outside my front door, 30, maybe 40 feet away. I've lived here my whole life. I grew up right here. And that was my grandfather's house. I bought that after he died in 2006. <clears throat> the whole reason that this is zoned the way that it is is because this was Ted Sadler's home furnishing store back in the 70s. That's the only reason it's zoned what it is. 
This is a small one-lane road that goes all the way at dead ends at my house. There's no other way in. There's no other way out. And according to this, this is your guidelines for the choice for this. Drive to parks should have more than one possible access route and the increases in potential vehicle traffic should not cause an undue burden on additional landowners. How is this gonna happen? We got 15 people, 17 people gonna try to park in here. How am I gonna get out? There's only one way. You're telling me there's only 17 people gonna be allowed? Where are they gonna park? Then the people that live in the, all the houses right there have no way to get out. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, I agree, dog parks are great. I spent a lot of time in Seattle, go to dog parks with my cousin, they're awesome. But this just doesn't make sense. And because of the natural hill slope down to Lace, this is the only way to do it, and I get it. But I don't wanna live the rest of my life listening to dogs bark 30 feet out my front door. I'd rather you guys buy my house and turn it into a parking lot. That's all I got to say. Are there any other, yep. please come forward. Please state and spell your name and identify if you're a group. Uh, uh, Aaron Gard, last name G-A-R-D. Um, I, uh, I also live on uh, Lace Road, and uh, we've been following the dog park for quite some time, and, you know, from its, uh, I wouldn't say the very beginning, uh, but probably since, you know, 2020, um, but I, I got some, you know, just some statements of, you know, we, we feel that it's just going to forever change um, the neighborhood if it, get, if it gets, you know, built. I mean, it, right now it's, it's a peaceful neighborhood. We don't hear, we, we don't have, you know, dogs barking all the time. There's barely anybody driving around. It's, it's, it's a, it's a residential neighborhood. It's single family. I mean, it's, uh, it's a great neighborhood and it's just, well, it'll change it. Um, and a big, a big deal for us too is the school. Um, you know, it, this map really doesn't give it justice it is right across the road i mean and after after school i mean there's tons of cars parked there i mean and they come on to lace i mean you're gonna have a huge impact there with uh now you got people in the dog park there's gonna be uh you know a huge problem there with uh, accidents and, ki and, and kids getting hit i mean our kids walk home on lace i mean i don't know if they've thought about that but there is a, a huge blind corner there actually two i mean you got the a rock retaining wall there's nowhere to go in a guardrail, and then the, and another blind corner. Not sure if you have to realign the entire road there. Um, so the preferred location originally was in Eagle River, um, the firehouse lane, and the residents there they threw a hissy fit, and they they got it turned down. And so, but Eagle River Parks and Rec did. It was like, well, we got to we got to build it somewhere. And so here it goes. Uh, this is they just jammed it in the place that is. This is where they could do it. So here, here that's where it went. Um, uh, <clears throat> Mirror Lake, Edmonds Lake. Uh, there's a, uh, a a master plan that's currently getting redone there. That that might be an alternative area for them to look at. Um, I mean, and then of course, money-wise too. I mean, they originally stated this project for three hundred thousand dollars, I believe. Uh, what is it now? I mean, this is pre-COVID. Um, is this the best way to spend money? I mean, the seems like the municipality is hurting for money right now for all kinds of projects. And you know, <clears throat> Eagle River Chigiak. I mean, we we have a. Uh, there's really nothing for kids to do out there. I mean, uh, there's some parks. Uh, but the winter time, I mean, we're focusing money on building a dog park. Shouldn't we be using that money to, for stuff for kids to do? Uh, just, just my two cents on that one. Uh, I think, oh, in the, he brought up mushers in the neighborhood. I mean, there's no mushers in the neighborhood. That's, that's all I got to say.
My name is uh, Jacob Horzdovsky. Spelling the last name is H O R A Z D O V S K Y. And I'm here on behalf of the Chugat Community Council. I'm currently the secretary of the Community Council. And I've been on the board for a long time, since 2014 or so. Um, so um, we've been talking about a dog park in our community for a long time. Um, we've, it's been in our parks and rec discussion in our meetings. You know, we, we chat about it, we talk about it, and there's it's been a lot of discussion on it. R&M, you know, kind of started the process in 2018 when they did a study of Chugach Eagle River and looked at a ton of locations for where we could put the park in our community. And every location has its problems. You know, we looked at Loretta French Park, which is just down the way. But that park is, it's a great park. It's got a ton of ball fields. It's got a playground. It's got a skateboard park. Ultimately, that park wasn't selected because there's too many uses going on right now. And adding a dog park is considered a conflicting use. Or that's, you know, kind of what our council process. Beach Lake Park, I don't remember the full discussion on that park. But I do know that the dog mushers um, down at the park are very protective of their park. And adding a dog park next to that existing mushing area um, is probably going to create some significant conflicts there. So, you know, that, I'm not sure why else that one wasn't selected, but um, it's definitely one of the probably prevailing factors. Um, I didn't track much of the discussion in Eagle River, why I didn't go there, because that wasn't our, our deal. Um, <clears throat> so, um, regarding, you know, kind of use and the park selection, this, this land, this piece of property is already part of an existing park. So the land is designated as a park. So, you know, yes, it's nice as woods, but it'll also make a great dog park. Um, one of our board members, he's not here tonight, but uh, his name is Matt Hickey. His family owns the house right on Hunter's Drive that's directly adjacent to that property, and they are unopposed to it. I know some of the other residents are not happy about it being here, but, you know, it's kind of the nature of the beast when it goes in there. Um, we talked about start site lighting a bit. You know, dark skies are very important to our community, so it's important that light from this park doesn't shine, you know, out onto the sky and onto the surrounding residences. I think they've done a pretty good job with their lighting and keeping it small. Um, so we have the parking lot lit, so we can see what's going on, but we're not lighting up the whole, the whole sky. Um, as far as need for the dog park, you know, there's, there's a lot of dogs that go to Retta French and other parks, and there's some conflicting uses there. People let their dogs run wild in the community. They come up to kids, um, and it, it's kind of a problem. So having a dog park in our community that's open to the public and not a private dog park will help alleviate some of those other conflicts that happen um, in our community. It will also help with the dog mess that happens in the spring. Hopefully it will be concentrated in this park and not in our other parks. Um, Um, talking about the existing site, you know, uh, it's been presented to us that, that I haven't walked that back portion of the site, but I understand there's an existing gravel pit that was mined out in the 50s and 60s in there. So a lot of this use that's happening back in the woods will happen in that gravel pit, which makes it a, a more well-suited location. Um, we've talked about our community council, some of the issues with Hunter's Drive and Lace Road. It's all something that you know can be accommodated it's an existing road there's you know there's sight distance there's already traffic on it so putting more more a few more cars on it doesn't seem like a, a big issue to us um and then you know regarding fencing around the park park i think that's a good idea um that helps keep users inside the park you know if there's concerns maybe they could move the fencing in just a little farther into the park but um, it doesn't seem like a big deal so i'll reserve the rest of my time for questions thanks Commissioner Foland. I have a question, a couple questions. I'm not sure if you're going to, the one that knows this. Um, I might have missed this, but are there like a operating hours already in discussion? Like when would the park be open? Uh, you know, I'm not sure what the operating hours are. I, most of our parks close at 11, I believe. Right, Jeff? Yeah, so I assume this one's going to have the same operating hours as our, our other parks. Okay. And this is just a side um, design comment. Um, Chain link fencing is also one of, I mean, I hate it. And I have a property that I, it was the only thing that they were, um, the fencing contractor could put on this commercial property. And you can also get it um, vinyl wrapped, which sounds terrible, in black, and the action, it makes it go away. It goes in, it becomes invisible, essentially. Just, it's more expensive, but um, it's a lot 
um, better design. Okay. Thanks. I guess one other comment is, you know, we would like to see this park go forward um, closely to as design, and we'd like to build them this this summer. So, thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Yep. Please come forward. Please state and spell your name and indicate whether you are testifying as an individual or a representative of a group. Actually, first, can I ask, can I give you guys handouts? I actually got, and I have enough for everyone. Um, it's got... Um, we we, we need you to state and spell your name first oh, and sure. then indicate whether you're part of a group or an individual. Um, my name is Amanda Adams, A-D-A-M-S, and I um, am testifying on behalf of myself. I actually have the property on the corner here. So, um, and I, I just have handouts. I figured it's easier to see because I, oh, and this is on. in reference to some of the questions that have already gone. Are we allowed to receive a handout? Okay, yeah, we can receive a handout. Okay, can I pop the perfect thing? If you hand them to her, she'll distribute them. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me and allowing me to speak tonight. Um, I just wanted to kind of bring up a couple of things that have been mentioned before earlier, and that's why I have these uh, packets. But uh, there is the dog park going in. I did um, print off the opening day. I also printed off the reference to the H, uh, HB 304, the house bill that granted that area specifically for a dog park in Eagle River. Um, so in reference to the application here, it says the major site plan application page 16. The purpose of this is to develop an off-leash dog park within Eagle River, Chugiak Parks and Rec Service area. There's already one there. And they did it, no offense, Jeff, but who's amazing, but they did it better. They have, a, they have a, log, a large dog area and a small dog area in there, and they're separated because apparently there's a conflict between that. They, they went through the motions, they've done all this stuff, and we already have the dog park. There's been no support for this product for this other than the community council, which is nice that they want that. Um, but there wasn't even a resolution from them and that was because the time that they brought it up there was so much opposition and everyone was bickering and going back and forth so much that they just went ahead with it because that's what the community council wants. That's not what the support wants. Um, so, and you can see too, and there's, you know, they're talking about Eagle River. So the, the Firehouse Lane Park actually scored higher on the criteria. You know, they're going against the development, highest development potential, but that's only because there's less people to go and push against this. So, and then their survey that they talk about, this 2017 survey results, everything, all of the questions were in regards to a dog park in Eagle River. It's a firehouse. The people, they specifically asked if people, their support that they're referencing is literally right here and it's for Eagle River. It's not for Chugiak. And you can go see the, that, the full thing. I just hit a couple of the high parks. But it's how interested are you in having a dog park in Eagle River? There's nothing in here about Chugiak. There's never been any demonstrated support for this dog park. Then they come back here, which best describes where you live. Nine tenths of it is in Eagle River. They didn't ask Chugiak if they wanted the dog park. They asked Eagle River if Eagle River wanted a dog park. There's not support out there. We have a petition that was turned in earlier. I know that was a question to Jeff earlier, that, and he wasn't here for that. But it was turned in, and it was completely disregarded by Eagle River Parks and Rec. Um, so there's no support for this location, let alone this plan. Um, uh, 
uh, for the approval criteria, I got that part, sorry. <laughs> I had to write this one on the fly. Um, not compatible. The park, I agree with you 100%. Okay. Um, if you'd like to quickly Condense, sum yeah, up I can hit the their high, gap. Yeah, I, I'll hit the high parts. But um, they actually have this hunter's drive actually on my property. So they have to even get it off there because it's literally on my private property. And that's not owned by Mac Hickey. That's owned by Jimmy Hickey. Um, and so referencing that is irrelevant because Matt doesn't own that property. Um, and the support, the letter of support from Eagle River Maintenance on this corner, he's under the impression it's not going to be a year-round thing and they can still put the snow there. Okay. Um, other than that, I'm a landlord. I, I'm not allowed to have dog, res, dog breed restrictions. There's actually three properties on here. There's two sixplexes. Okay. I, like, really quick is what I meant. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, you're totally fine. I appreciate it. But known bad traffic area. Everybody knows this is a bad traffic area. Everybody parks along the road to go get their kid from nope. the elementary school. And you have a series of blind corners. It's a one-lane okay. road. We don't Sorry. have enough. So. Sorry, okay. I thought you had like a sentence left to oh, finish. Oh, yeah, no. Sorry. No. Sorry. <laughs> trying to hit all the high points. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Will Tagan, T as in Tom, A-Y, G as in George, A-N. I'm here as a representative of the Chugiak Eagle River Parks and Rec Board of Supervisors. Um, this is, uh, I am the Chugiak Community Council representative for the Chugiak Eagle River Board of Supervisors. And one thing you guys, I, 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 does anyone here live in Chugiak Eagle River? Thank you. Um, we actually have a slightly different process out there, which means all uh, park projects have to go through. Uh, we don't have a parks commission. We actually have a, a, our separate parks and rec board of supervisors. In order for any of these projects to be recommended, there has to be a vote from representatives from all six, or well, five of the community councils. Um, so. This project has uh, gone through that, I guess, sixth part of Title 21 to be approved um, by the community as a whole, and that's the way our public process works. Um, <clears throat> it's always tough to be a neighbor next to a public park that is undeveloped and is not an activated park because that's not, you know, that's public land. That's land for our community to use as a whole. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> there are mushers in the neighborhood two blocks over when I walk my dog. There's, you know, there's howling going on. Um, the other thing I'd like to just such, uh, uh, kind of uh, explain is this is the core of the walking area for Chugiak. So if you live in Chugiak and you want to bring your kids somewhere to use a bike path, we don't have anything except for the path along the old glen. So most of the community will drive to Loretta French Park and there's a large parking lot there, and then they'll walk the Glen. Uh, another big draw is the disc golf course, which is in the same park, but on the north side, there's also a parking area there. It's usual for folks to be walking along the Old Glen on, in those two areas. And the reason this project started is because the Chugat Community Council uh, had a request. Uh, too many dog owners were using Loretta French Park, which is the park directly south. So this site was, specifically chosen to uh, be accessible to the main walking corridor in the park in existing public space and it is an area that will be able to move those conflicting uses uh, out of those areas. The design itself, um, this is a 10 year long process and there's been a lot of comments through the years and I would like to, we've been very pleased with Parks and Rec. Before Jeff was there, we were working with Josh Durand, uh, the former parks um, director. He was a landscape architect. He's the one who actually designed the parking lot and I think he went through about a dozen different iterations um, based on the public comments on that first round. Uh, when you saw the petition based on that round, all these um, modifications were made to the design. So if you really look at the most recent public process, I think five people showed up. I was one of them. I've been at all the public uh, comments before. I do hear the neighbors. Um, I do feel that the park has addressed 
pretty much all the technical concerns that the neighbors had. It was mostly about sight lines. They did not address the issue of having park development next to their houses. And I, I understand that is, um, that's, that's something that's going to change their neighborhood, but it is a public, it is, an, it is a public park. And the wonderful thing about this park is it's a gravel pit. So when you're going to be in there with your dogs, you're going to be below. You are going to be actually sunk down uh, on the trails there. So it, there isn't really any way you have to climb up and out to get, uh, to get out of that. So it's, it's been a long process. We haven't found a better site. Um, Loretta French itself is where we wanted it to go, but every single inch of that park is activated. There's archers, there's softball players, there's horse park, there's stuff, that, there's model planes flying in the back there. There's basketball courts, there's a skate park. There's no, there's no space that is not being used there at the moment. So um, the Board of Supervisors recommends um, developing this parcel, so thank you. Are there any other members of the public? Oh. Are there any other members of the public that wish to testify? Um, would the petitioner like to use their remaining time for rebuttal? I, th I believe you had five minutes and 15 seconds. I would love to. Uh, since I'm on this slide, I guess I would just reiterate uh, this area in the front here is flat and the rest of it is dished. Um, so if you're walking your dog in there, you, you are definitely um, in, the, in the topography. Um, I'm going to jump to something else. Commis uh, Commissioner Foland asked a question and I, and I, I, I misspoke or excuse me, I spoke inarticulately. Um, when I talked about a 30-foot buffer from the property line, that includes the fence. So the fence itself will be set 30 feet inside the property line. So understanding and your comments about the visibility of the fencing, we can, we can, I'm amenable to looking at that, particularly along this stretch, but there will be 30 feet of trees before the fence. So the fence will not be right on the property line. And I think um, that's probably an important point of clarification. And also, if it were, I mean, it's maybe if there's an area that it is higher visibility for the neighbors, if you just did that area in black, it goes, it totally goes away. I, 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 yeah. I, I copy. <laughs> um, a couple other things that have come up is the proximity of the school. Um, I did, a, you know, like the rest of us, tried to become a Google expert to see if this is an issue elsewhere in the country. Um, nothing popped up that way. Um, in terms of the dog parks that are in town, uh, several of them have schools at the same proximity of this, but all, all the, the parks that have schools within, excuse me, the dog parks that have uh, schools within like a lot or two include Valley of the Moon, Sean Snoo, Russian Jack, which has two schools. Uh, the New Eagle River Lions Club has the Gruning, shares a property boundary, and there's a private uh, religious-based school across the street. Um, I think that, so that, that is not something that's unique in terms of, or, or, you know, a known challenge in our community is the proximity of schools. Um, in terms of the Mirror Lake project that was mentioned, the master plan, I'm actually the project manager for that project, and I don't see anything, th this is not a, there's no, like, opportunity cost in terms of building these things and other, other, uh, other things that may or may not be included at Mirror Lake Park. Um, in terms of the service area, our budget works a little bit different than Anchorage will mention that our approval process is a little different. Um, we don't lose our funds at the end of the year. They're not swept back. So we're able to hold on to funding for, for a while for projects. Um, and this project will not um, take, nothing is getting dropped off the list as a result of building this project. And certainly um, I'm in a new position out there for more improvements for, for our community. Um, 
in terms of Beach Lake, we're moving more towards with the mushing being such a big part of that, that that may be uh, more of an on-leash dog walking area versus Mirror Lake uh, Park. The point I would make is that um, mushing really creates an incompatibility with off-leash um, beyond just like an inconvenience, a health and safety thing for mushers. That was why that got dropped off the list. Um, in terms of Loretta French, if you've ever been out there, you'd say, oh, there's this big wide open area. Um, unfortunately, that's the sledding hill and the people who use that hill make it all the way out to the parking lot. So there is absolutely no area of that open area that would be safe uh, to walk dogs. Um, one other thing I thought I would mention, in terms of the public outreach, there's been more than one survey, um, and we've been to community councils more than one time. Um, I, I do know there was a contentious meeting at the time of, uh, of the petition. I, like I said, I live, this is my, my community council is, is Chugiak, and so I'm aware through that that there was a contentious meeting. There were subsequent meetings, and I believe that the resolution of support or the statement of support came at those later, later meetings. Um, but there were certainly more than one, um, one survey and, and uh, more than one trip through most of the community councils. And then just in terms of Firehouse Lane, I, I, would, uh, I would just, my earlier comments about the unsuitability of that site, I, I, w I would probably just let stand. And I think that's the balance of my time, and I think that's all the questions that I have. Oh, and, and just that some, some of the petition, maybe just one other point of clarification. Uh, these, are, these are changes since the petition. So, um, and that was one of the reasons that I highlighted the receipt of the petition, both in my presentation today as well as in the application. And when I, my first remarks in terms of benefiting from a longer public process, we had the opportunity to tweak the design. And so these, these are all changes that came after the petition. Thank you. I have a quick question. Commissioner Fulwin. Uh, so a quick question. Is there a reason why you don't have a area for a small and like a fenced in little small dog area? I'm just curious. I, I, uh, that was part of the design. When, I, 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 don't, I don't know the answer to that question. It was just probably the simplest way to say it. I mean, that would just be a way to maybe improve it. Yeah. Okay, any answer? Someone with involvement with the project a little bit that predates me can. Uh, oh. Can we let him? Why don't <laughs> let me have and that's not part of the public record, never mind, but if you'd like to speak out what, what I, I I would just also say it we're not a, 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 I mean people have a mixture of dogs, but but I don't I don't know that there's a that's just not something that we've heard through the process since I've been involved is yeah. the need for the separation. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Strait? Yeah, a couple things I want to follow up based on the public comment. Um, first of all, uh, that operating hours, do you know what those are? As someone stated, our typical hours are at 11, and I would refer to staff. I said you said that you guys were going to make a request. Was that just standard hours, or did you have hours attached to your condition of approval? Uh, I did not attach specific hours to the condition of approval. I just said uh, I wrote it where it had to show closure of the park at night. Um, so I, I didn't request specific hours, but to, to show clear closure at night. 11 is our standard time. Okay. At what time does it open in the morning? Do you know? I believe it's 7. Okay. Uh, and then one other question uh, regarding Hunter. Do you know, uh, there was a comment made about kind of the width of it and the, the ability of vehicles to move along it. Do you know, it looks like based on the plans, and I don't know if the line work was actually surveyed or not, it looks to be about 20 feet wide existing? Uh, it, it is, and, and there, during the staff pre-application, one of the commissioners asked a question about 
sight distances and the rest of it. I, I, in fact, I think it may have been you. There, there was a, a little bit of a heart-stopping moment for me in the discussion in terms of both the location and the construction standard for Hunter's Drive. Um, anything that is deficient in Hunter's Drive is past the project. Um, so from the, you know, the driveway plus a little bit back to, back to Lace, uh, Hunter is 20 feet wide and located within the right-of-way. And some of the other other concerns about width, uh, it certainly as it gets to private, it, it, it tapers a little bit, um, and it is, and it is outside of the right of way at um, pa past our project. Thank you. And I should add, because at one point we were looking at a reconstruction of Hunter's Drive, <laughs> which changes the budget. Are there any more questions from the commission for the petitioner or staff? Um, hearing none, seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the matter now rests with the body. We will move and vote. Uh, may we have a motion to approve in case 2024-0053. Uh, it's been moved by Commissioner Gordy. Uh, mover, please state your motion. I move in case 2024-0053 to approve the major site plan review for Peters Creek Dog Park subject to conditions one through three shown on pages six and seven of the staff report. It's been seconded by Commissioner Strait. Commissioner Gordy, would you please speak to your motion? Yes. Um, I intend to support the motion. Um, I believe the staff finding does, is accurate and, and that the site plan is, meets the approval <laughs> required for a major site plan review. Um, I can go through the findings one by one, which I will do momentarily, but I do want to say um, I acknowledge that it is difficult to have landscaping and park use change in a neighborhood that you're familiar with for a long time. I have also lived in smaller communities in Alaska and have uh, seen a lot of change over time and I realize that it is very difficult to watch those things change. Um, and I appreciate everybody for participating in the public process to get us to this point. Um, but I do find that the findings of staff um, that the project meets the criteria for approval is accurate. Um, so going through the points, um, the site plan is consistent with previously approved subdivision plat, plan development, master plan, or any other precedent plan or land use approval. Um, the planning department approved an admin site plan for the new parking lot and amenities in support of the Peters Creek Dog Park um, in 2022. Conditions of approval were met. Um, and there is not a park master plan for Peters Creek Park to meet, um, but the um, site plan is consistent with the use of the um, property. Number two, the site plan complies with any, with all applicable development and design standards set forth in the title, including but not limited to the provisions in Chapter 2104 Zoning Districts, Chapter 2105 Use Regulations, Chapters 2106, dimensional standards and measurements in chapter 2107, development and design standards. Um, I'm not gonna go through each one of staff's findings. I think they're very clearly stated in this packet, um, but pursuant to any of the approval conditions, I find that this is met as well. Um, number three, the site plan addresses any significant adverse impacts that can reasonably be anticipated to result from the use by mitigating or offsetting those impacts to the maximum extent feasible. Um, I do want to commend the petitioner for having the time and, and incorporating as much public input as possible to mitigate 
um, adverse impacts from this project. I feel like there have been a lot of things that have been addressed through design moves um, and, and trying to listen to the public comment as much as possible. And item four, the development proposed in the site plan is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through each one of the goals that are outlined um, in the staff report, but I find that this is met as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Strait. Um, would you like to speak to your second? Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you, everybody, for coming and testifying today. Um, it it definitely helps inform our our decisions, and I very much appreciate it. Um, I also want to talk to the property owners that that have concerns with the, the adjacent park. Um, I, I can definitely understand your concerns uh, with this change of use of the, the park land adjacent to the property um, and your concerns there. But that being said, um, I, I would also like to commend kind of the petitioner for the rather thorough site selection process and the discussion revolving around that as well as all the efforts gone through to mitigate as much as possible the concerns that were raised during the public involvement process. So um, for um, all those reasons, I'm going to uh, vote to approve this motion. Thank you. Are there any other commissioners wishing to speak to the motion and or add findings? If there's no further discussion, may we have a vote on case number 2024-0053. Ms. Lucas, how do you vote? Approve. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, case 2024-0053 has passed with a yes vote of six, zero no, zero abstaining, and zero recused. Uh, so that that concludes. Uh, I, I'll be. I'm moving on with our agenda. You're welcome to stay if you'd like. But again, we thank you all for coming out and providing your testimony. Um, there are no um, uh, appearance requests uh, or reports from the chair, the secretary, or the committee. Um, so now we will move to agenda item. C2, thank you. C2, um, which is annual elections of officers. I've never done this part before. What do I do? Is there a motion to nominate someone to serve as chair? Uh, Commissioner Gordy? Uh, yes, I move to uh, keep Commissioner McKee as the chair at this time. I think you've done a very great job in the last little bit and I would like to see you continue in the role. Thank you. Commissioner Street. Uh, I concur. Uh, I think you've done a great job, and I would uh, very much appreciate you uh, staying in that role. <laughs> so now what do we do? Do I move for a vote? Um, are there any objections to me continuing in my role as the chair? Uh, seeing none, I will continue to serve as the chair. 
Do I need to get a vice chair? Uh, I'd like a uh, motion to nominate uh, the vice chair. Uh, Commissioner Foland? I will nominate um, Commissioner Gordy to stay as the vice chair because um, she's doing a great backup job. <laughs> Commissioner Strait? I agree. I think she's doing a great job and uh, she filled in quite well. Um, her duties as uh, uh, vice chair when uh, the chair was absent. Excellent. I also support this nomination. I, I need to be gone more often so that she gets to have more experience in this role. Uh, are there any objections to Commissioner Gordy staying in her role as vice chair? Seeing none, hearing none, uh, we will retain Commissioner Gordy to serve as vice chair. Uh, let's see here. Uh, comments from the commissioner. I'd like to welcome our latest commissioner to the board, James. How do you like to pronounce? I don't, I don't want to try to say your last name and say it wrong. James Collis. Collis. Would you like to introduce yourself to the board? Uh, I'm James Collis. I live out in Eagle River, uh, right there in the main drag along the Old Glen in between North and South of Eagle River. Um, civil engineer by trade. Uh, moved up here during... Uh, middle school, dad was in the Air Force, went up to UAF, got my degree. Been up here doing civil engineering and general contracting ever since. Great. Well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments from other commissioners? Just welcome to the board. We're excited to have a new member. Okay. Uh, can I please get a motion to adjourn? It's been moved by Commissioner Strait. It's been seconded by Commissioner Foland. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned at 8.01 p.m. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs>